हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक सो नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट मेटाबॉलिज्म व्हाट इज द एम ऑफ मेटाबॉलिज्म सो द एम ऑफ मेटाबॉलिज्म इज टू मेक अ ड्रग वाटर सोल्यूबल टू मेक अ ड्रग वाटर सोल्यूबल ओके नाउ दिस मेटाबॉलिज्म यूजुअली हैव टू फेसेस इट हैव टू फेसेस पी एच एस एस टू फेसेस द like phase 1 okay and here it is phase 2 now phase 1 in phase 1 most of the reactions are catabolic okay catabolic reaction and it happens in like by two ways it usually occurs with the help of enzymes this phase 1 phase 1 reaction so the first one are like microsomal enzymes and the second one is known microsomal non microsomal enzymes okay have different processes like microsomal enzymes have different processes like number 1 is oxidation okay number 2 is reduction number 3 is hydrolysis and many more okay so the most common phase 1 reaction is the most common phase 1 reaction is this oxidation reaction most common okay and in this non microsomal there is example like like anesthesia ns thesia okay anesthesia this phase this phase one most of the reactions are catabolic this is also termed as catabolic reactions catabolic reactions what is the purpose of this phase one in this phase one we expose the functional group on the drug every drug drug have some functional group okay so in phase 1 we expose that functional group of the drug or on the drug okay now in phase 2 there are some other reactions like number 1 is acetylation acetylation with endogenic substance okay number 2 is glucuronidation or glucuronide ronide glucuronide okay and third one is sulf fashion okay number 4 is methylation okay and in this phase 2 the most common reaction or by which phase most of the reaction are done is glucuronidation by this glucuronidation it is the most common reaction in phase 2 okay so what is the purpose of phase 2 see in phase 1 we make the drug in phase 1 we make the drug the functional group of the drug expose okay in phase 1 we expose the functional group on the drug okay expose functional group on the drug you can also write this we expose functional group on the drug okay and in phase 2 we make the drug water soluble water soluble and in phase 2 most of the reactions are anabolic what anabolic but 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 see in phase 1 we use this catabolic reaction term but in phase 2 we do not use it as anabolic reactions now you should ask me what is this microsomal and non microsomal enzymes in phase 1 there are like microsomal and non microsomal enzymes okay by microsomal enzymes we do oxidation reduction hydrolysis by non micro non microsomal enzymes there is one reaction like anesthesia for example okay so what are these enzymes okay these are the enzymes that are present in the endoplas endoplasmic reticulum and to be very precise like in your liver you have a smooth endoplasmic reticulum microsomal enzyme these are inside the microsomes what are microsomes endoplasmic reticulum okay and known non microsomal enzymes are outside the microsomes what are microsomes endoplasmic reticulum microsomes are endoplasmic reticulum and to be very precise which endoplasmic reticulum A smooth endoplasmic reticulum okay so example of this microsomal enzyme there are many many these are microsomal enzymes are set of many enzymes the one example like i want to give you is cyp 450e cytochrome 450e 
So microsomal enzyme, one example of microsomal enzyme is cytochrome P450. Okay, and this help in metabolizing drug. As I told you, microsomal enzymes, okay, microsomal enzymes, they help in metabolizing drug and by which reactions, catabolic reactions, which type of catabolic reactions like oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis, okay. Now, these microsomal enzymes can be induced or inhibit, okay, by different drugs. So, now let's discuss about microsomal inducers those drugs that can induce or increase the function of microsomal enzymes and microsomal inhibitors they can inhibit these drugs can inhibit the function of these microsomes and they can cause like they will decrease the reaction so microsomal inducers will increase the reaction these inhibitors will decrease the reaction there is one mnemonic to remember this that is g a r i M A S Garimas. Okay, so the first one is Gri so full vir. Gri so Gri so full vir. Okay, now anti epileptic drugs except remember except valproic acid like. All, all the anti-epileptic drugs are microsomal inducers, except valproic acid, R4, rifam, piscine, I4, iso, niazide, M4, meat, meat like of goat, beef, chicken, okay, meat, A4, alcohol, and alcohol also chronic, like you are drinking too much alcohol for very long time, okay, and S4, smoking the smoking all of these are microsomal inducers they will increase the function of those microsomal enzymes so they will increase the reaction okay they will increase the metabolism okay now there is one mnemonic for microsomal inhibitors and that mnemonic is s i c k sick f a c e sick f a c e s sick faces dot com S4 sodium valproate I4 iso niazide C C4 same pridin K4 keta kona zol keta kona zol F4 fluoretin A4 alcohol alcohol acute C4 chloram phenicol chloram phenicol can you give an example for this chloram phenicol so levo my citin levo my citin levo my citin okay E4 erythro mycin S for sulfone amide. C po C for cipro flexin. Cipro flexin. O for omi prazole. M for metro. M e t r o metro. Nidazole. M e t r o n i d a z o l e. Metro nidazole. Now. Some of you can ask me a question like isoniazide is also here. Isoniazide is also here. Okay. So it is inducer or inhibitor. See, isoniazide, it matters like in which dose you are taking it and by which drug you are taking it. So it's matter. Okay. In different situation, it acts differently. But it's a more, it's more inhibitor. So it's more inhibitor. Okay, so if someone asks isoniazide is microsomal inhibitor or inducer, then you should say it's inhibitor as well as inducer. But if someone wants to ask only one, tell me one, like it's an inducer or inhibitor, then it's a inhibitor. What? Inhibitor. And remember this, in microsomal inducers, there are all anti-epileptic drugs except valproic acid. Except valproic acid. 
Now, let me give some examples to understand these microsomal inducers and inhibitors. Like why we are studying this. Okay, so let's go to the example part. Okay, now examples. For example, a female take oral contraceptive pill. Okay, a female take oral contraceptive pill with with semi. With simitidine, so this simitidine. What is simitidine? Simitidine is microsomal inhibitor, as you can see. Simitidine, it's microsomal inhibitor. So it will does what? It inhibits. So because of that inhibition, the reaction will become. It's what? It's inhibitor, microsomal inhibitor. So inhibitors does what? They will decrease the reaction. They will decrease the reaction. So, because of this decreased reaction, that drug will not metabolize properly. So, if it will not metabolize, then this drug can cause toxicity. This drug will increase in the body of that female. Which drug? This oral contraceptive pills will increase and it will cause drug toxicity. Okay, I will give you one more example. Like female take oral contraceptive pills. Okay, you know what is the composition of oral contraceptive pills? Estrogen and progesterone. Okay, I am just telling you. Oral contraceptive pills have estrogen and progesterone to terminate the pregnancy. Okay. See, the female take these oral contraceptive pills with rifam pisin. So rifam pisin is what? Rifam pisin is inducer, means activator. It will activate what? It will activate microsomal enzymes. So this will cause what? If microsomal enzymes will become active, they will increase the reaction. So when they will increase the reaction, then it can cause drug failure. Why drug failure? Because the reaction is increased. So the when they, the female will take these oral contraceptive pills and the metabolism will increase very rapidly because of rifampicin. There is a lot of metabolism in the body. So most of the drug is metabolized. So it won't reach properly into the blood circulation. So it will cause drug failure. I hope you understand this thing. Now, phase one is complete. Now let's discuss some points about phase 2 also. Okay. Phase 2. The number 1 is SI acetylation with endogenic substance. With endogenic substance. So, there are some examples of drugs that goes under this acetylation with endogenic substance. So, the example is S H I P ship. You know the Titanic ship ship. S for sulfon amide. Sulfonamide. H for hydrolazide. I for isoniazide. P for pro cane amide. These drugs can cause SLE, systemic lupus erythematous. You know SLE, systemic lupus erythematous. Systemic lupus erythematous. What, what is the feature of this SLE? Butterfly rash on skin. Butterfly rash on skin and wire loop kidney. Butterfly rash on skin and wire loop kidney. So these drugs can cause SLE these ship drugs okay and if you want if i want to tell you the order of these drugs then h h p and i okay this is the order of sle side effect now second one is glucoronidation so example of this glucoronidation are Example are chloram, chloram, phenicol, chloram, phenicol, and morphine, chloram, phenicol, like levomycetin, levomycetin. Okay. So, and by third and fourth, the third one is sulfation, and fourth one is methylation. 
there are many drugs that went under this sulfonation and methylation like most of the drugs went under them sulfonation methylation and this glucuronidation most of the drugs goes under this so because of there are so many drugs we are not writing there some examples so you just have to remember this this ship drugs okay this goes in acetylation with endogenic substance these example are ship okay these drugs can cause sle sle is systemic lupus erythematous what are the features of this sle butterfly rash on skin and via loop kidney okay the side effect level like hydrolyze will cause more than procainamide and procainamide will cause more sle than isoniazide okay that's all i hope everything is clear thank you